introduction, let's open our Bibles in Numbers chapter 14 verse 9. And we're looking at the promises of God and there are more than 7,000 promises of God na hindi po lahat para sa atin. I'm always making this clear. Okay? Kasi may mga pastor na nagsasabi na inaangkin nyo lahat ng mga pangako ng Diyos sa Bible, hindi naman yan para sa inyo. Correct po, hindi ho lahat ng promises sa Bible ay sinabi at binigay para sa bawat isa sa atin. Hindi po. Uh, most of the promises, especially in the Old Testament, were given to the children of Israel. And ang kagandahan po nito, kaya natin pinag-aaralan, is para makita po natin na bagamat ito'y binigay sa children of Israel in particular, those promises can be applied sa atin kasi hindi naman po siya lahat ay uh, specifically ay applicable lang sa children of Israel. Oh, kamukha ng sinabi na, I love them that love me. Diba? At, uh, and there are many other more. A blessing if you obey, a cursing if you disobey. Oh, mga pangako yan ng Panginoon na binigay sa children of Israel. Pero, ganun din, kung i-apply mo sa iyong buhay, you will benefit from it. Kaya, importante po na pinag-aaralan po natin ito in its context before we apply this sa ating buhay. And so, now we are in the book of Numbers. At dito po sa book of Numbers, makikita po natin ang kagandahan po nito. Kaya ako po ito tinuturo sa inyo uh, how the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt at uh, sila po ay pinalaya ng Diyos sa Egypt because God wanted to bring them to the promised land. Alright. So, di ba, we're looking at the promises of God. And pangit naman po na <laughs> pinag-aaralan natin yung promises of God na hindi man lang natin natutunan how God was able to fulfill His promise to the children of Israel at ito po ay may kinalaman sa pangako ng Diyos kay Abraham, kay Isaac, kay, kay Jacob na nag-ugat ito sa Abrahamic Covenant at sa covenant na ito, ang Diyos ay nangako na bibigyan sila ng lupain at ito nga po ay ang Kenyaan, the promised land So, this is what we are looking right now para makita po natin how God fulfilled His promises sa children of Israel. And why is it that many of these promises uh, hindi nag-benefit yung ilang generation ng children of Israel bagamat ito ay ibinigay ng Diyos para sa kanila. So, here's the thing na ating pinag-aaralan. So, this morning, ang ating pong titignan ay sa Numbers chapter 14, verse 9. Ang sabi po rito, Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Okay, sa context, ang nagsalita po nito ay si Caleb. There were 12 spies. And ten spies brought an evil report. The two spies, si Caleb and si Joshua, sila lang yung nagdala ng good news. And here in Numbers chapter 14 verse 9, sinasabi sa kanila ni Caleb, huwag kayong maghimagsik sa Panginoon o laban sa Panginoon. At huwag niyong katakutan ang mga tao doon sa promised land sapagkat sila'y ating kakainin parang tinapay. They are bread for us. Their defense, their defense is departed from them. Ang kanilang tanggulan ay wala na sa kanila. At ang Panginoon, si Yahweh, is with us. Huwag tayong matakot sa kanila. So, binitawan po itong mga salita na ito ni Caleb para palakasin ang loob ng children of Israel. Para sila'y pumasok sa lupang pangako. Ang sinasabi sa kanila ni Caleb, Only revel not ye against the Lord. The Lord is with us. 
fear them not. So, so umaga pong ito, titingnan natin why God's promises hindi na pa sa kanila para magkaroon ng katuparan because of their rebellion. At titingnan po natin sa umagang ito, ito pong subject na ito. Yung pong tinatawag na the evil results of rebellion. The evil results of rebellion. Tandaan po ninyo, pag naghimagsik ang kalooban nyo laban sa Diyos, hindi po maganda ang magiging resulta niyan sa inyong buhay. Sabi po sa Hebrews chapter 3, verse 11, So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Sa Hebrews chapter 3, verse 18, ganito rin po ang sinabi ng Panginoon. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. So ito po mga talata na ito sa New Testament, bagamat nasa New Testament na, sa book of Hebrews, ay tumutukoy and looking back doon sa pangyayari dito sa book of Numbers. Why the children of Israel was not able to enter the promised land, which God called rest. Pahinga sana yun eh. Yun na sana yung kanilang uh, panahon na matatapos yung kanilang pagod sa paglalakbay nila sa wilderness at sa pagkaalipin nila sa Egypt. Papasok na sana sila sa place of victory, place where they will enjoy the blessings of God, but they were not able to enter His rest. So, balikan natin. Ano ba ang nangyari? Like I said, 12 spies were chosen to scout out the land for 40 days. When they returned, 10 of them said that conquering the land would be impossible. They had seen their warriors as giants and their cities being fortified with great walls. And they were afraid. Yan po ang kasaysayan na mababasa natin sa Numbers chapter 13 verse 26 to 33. So after they heard these negative reports, the children of Israel whined and complained. But two of the spies, si Caleb nga po at si Joshua, reminded everyone that God had promised that land to them. So God would make it theirs if they would only trust and obey God. Pinangako na yan ng Diyos sa atin eh, sabi ni Caleb. Eh. Sa atin na yan. Kailangan lang nating magtiwala sa Diyos at sumunod. So of the 12 men sent to spy out the land, only Caleb and Joshua came back with a good report. They alone believe that despite the size and strength of the men in Canaan, God was able to give it to them. Dito po sa Numbers chapter 14, notice that the Lord called Caleb my servant. God would later in Joshua 14 reward Caleb because he had faithfully obeyed and was willing to follow the Lord wherever he leads. Caleb was a humble man, a man who feared and trusted God completely. Kailangan po natin na mga ganitong tao sa ating simbahan yung kamukha ni Caleb at ni Joshua. Kaugali, ibig sabihin. <laughs> Hindi ka itsura. Pag sinabing kamukha, kaugali. So what was different about Caleb? Sabi po sa Numbers 14 verse 24, But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. God said, He followed me fully. This is the secret and should be the goal of every one of us. To follow God fully. To follow Him completely. Without a divided heart. Without a bad attitude. 
Sabi nga po, attitude is like a flat tire. It won't bring you anywhere. So, huwag po tayo magkaroon ng bad attitude. Especially, kapag ka tayo po ay nasa hindi magandang sitwasyon. Following the Lord humbly, fully, consistently, without murmuring, and without arguing with our leaders, it is no small thing. If we would follow God fully, we must also, like Caleb, have a different spirit. Anong ibig sabihin na si Caleb ay may different spirit? One different from the spirit of the world and from our own natural proud spirit. Kasi tayo po, uh, by nature, proud. Masyado pong punong-puno tayo ng pride, ng ego. Self-ego. Yan. Yung ating katwiran na I'm the master of my will, I'm the captain of my soul. Yung iba sabi, hindi, suku naman ako sa Diyos eh. Pero pagka nakasama mo, malalaman mo na yung sinasabi niyang Diyos ay yung Diyos na ginawa niya. Oo. Kasi kung talagang suku tayo sa Diyos na totoo at buhay, hindi tayo kakakitaan ng yabang sa ating pakikitungo sa ating kapwa-tao. So, if we would follow God fully, we would have a different spirit. A spirit that comes from God. The spirit of God. And none else. Ito po yung different spirit na sinasabi na mayroon si Caleb. The spirit of God directing and guiding our lives. Each of us, mga minamahal, we need the spirit of God controlling and empowering our lives to correct our attitudes and for us to have proper outlooks each and every day sa ating buhay. Kaya nga po ang sabi ng Bible, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled or be controlled by the Spirit. Hayaan po natin ang Spirit ang mag-take control sa ating buhay, not the flesh. Hindi po natin pwedeng pairalin yung laman sa ating paglilingkod sa Diyos. Hindi pwedeng pwede na pagkakaya ng laman mo, sige na, ubra na yan. Hindi po. We have to make sure na ang atin pong ginagawa ay ginagawa natin under the influence and control of the Spirit of God. Yan po si Caleb at si Joshua. The children of Israel, however, were not willing to listen to them. Yung encouragement at pleading words ni Caleb at ni Joshua para lang pumasok sa kanilang tainga at lumabas sa kabila. They had no faith at that moment. They simply didn't want to follow Moses. Naniwala na sila sa negative report eh. Naniwala na sila sa majority. At lagi kong sinasabi sa inyo pinapaalala sa inyo, hindi porket yan ang majority, yan ang tama. Kahit na gano'n pa karami, ang may sabi at may isip niyan, hindi pa rin yan magiging tama kung yan ay lihis at hindi ayon sa salita ng Diyos. Si Joshua at si Caleb, binase nila yung kanilang decision at disposition at determination sa pangako at mga salita ng Diyos. But the children of Israel, they didn't want to follow Moses and they didn't want to trust God. Yes, the children of Israel. They wouldn't listen and instead, they talk of stoning Joshua and Caleb to death. Can you imagine that? Yung mga tao na nag encourage sa kanila, si Joshua at si Caleb, na nagpapalakas ng loob nila, na tinutulak sila sa pananampalataya sa Diyos, eh ito pa yung mga taong gusto nilang paslangin at wasakin. How rebellious people can be. Pag ang puso po natin ay naghihimagsik sa galit at ayaw nating sumunod sa Diyos dahil ipinipilit natin yung ating sariling paniniwala at gusto. Kahit yung mga taong nagmamalasakit sa atin, sila pa yung aawayin natin, sila pa yung magiging kagalit natin, 
at baka sa loob-loob natin gusto pa natin silang paslangin. Ay, wag naman pong ganon. Kasi ito pong children of Israel, ganon sila eh. Ganon yung attitude nila eh. Instead na maging thankful sila at grateful sila kay Joshua at kay Caleb, gusto pa nilang stone to death itong dalawang ito. Nagmamagaling kasi ang tingin nila kay Joshua at kay Caleb. Kaya mga minamahal, how rebellious these people could be. Sabi po sa Numbers chapter 14 verse 2, And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we have died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we have died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Here's the scary part. They wanted to choose their own leader. They want to get rid of Moses and Aaron. They want to do stone to death Joshua and Caleb. And they want to have their own chosen leader. And they wanted to go back to Egypt. How rebellious people can be. So God decided that because of their grumbling, complaining, and rebellion, God would raise a different nation. A nation He would raise from Moses. A nation mightier than Israel. A new generation that would inherit the promised land. Hindi disinherit na sana ng Diyos ang Israel. Eh. Sinabi niya yan kay Moses. But Moses, being a type of Christ, interceded for Israel. He disagreed and pleaded with God. A beautiful type of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nakapagka nandiyan si Satan at ina-accuse tayo sa harapan ng Diyos. Ang ating Panginoong Jesus is making intercession for us. He is our, our, our advocate with the Father. He is our defense lawyer sa harapan ng Diyos. Kaya wala hong katalo-talo ang kaso natin. And there's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Praise God. If you have trusted Christ as your Savior, talo mo pang may Moses sa langit. Talo mo pa ang children of Israel na may Moses. Kasi kaya sinasabi ko ito, alam nyo itong children of Israel, matagal na dapat itong nawala at nabura sa ibabaw ng mundo eh. Noon pa lamang paglabas nila sa Egypt at sila'y gustong dalhin ng Diyos sa promised land, pero puro paghihimagsik ng kalooban at galit sa Diyos ang kanilang ipinakita sa Diyos. Doon pa lamang sa wilderness, gusto na silang ubusin ng Diyos at patayin lahat. Eh. Buti na lang may Moses, who is a type of Christ, who is always uh, praying and interceding for them, for their deliverance, at para sila ay makapasok sa promised land. Kaya mga minamahal, as important as Moses was to the children of Israel, sa atin po, mga minamahal, napakahalaga ni Jesus Christ sa ating buhay. If not for Jesus Christ, we would have died in our sins. At lahat po ng tao, without Jesus Christ, will die and go to hell. We need Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We need Jesus Christ sitting at the right hand of the Father now, making intercession for the saints. Kaya sana sa umagang ito, you know for sure that Jesus Christ is not only a person that you know, but a person whom you trusted as your Lord and Savior, as your intercessor. So, ito po, nag-intercede si Moses. At ang sabi po ni Moses, dito sa Numbers 14, verse 13, and Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up these people in thy might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, for they have heard that thou, Lord, art among these people. But thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. 
Now, if thou shalt kill all these people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring them to this land which he swear unto them, therefore he had slain them in the wilderness. Ang galing ni Moses, ano? <laughs> Sabi niya, Panginoon, pag pinatay mo lahat itong mga taong ito na parang isang tao, anong sasabihin ng ibang mga bansa? Anong sasabihin ng mga Egyptians? Kaya mo sila nilabas sa Egypt at kaya mo sila pinatay sa wilderness kasi hindi mo sila kayang ipasok sa promised land? Eh nasa na yung nakita nilang kapangyarihan mo? Lahat ng himala mo? Lahat ng iyong ginawa para sa kanila? Alam nyo mga minamahal, when the people of Israel rebelled against their God-appointed leader, they really do not know what they are missing. They really do not know that this person they are refusing is the one who is praying for them. Si Moses. And that's why God wanted to destroy the whole nation and just start again with Moses. However, Tingnan po ninyo ang response ni Moses. Sabi niya, the Egyptians will hear about it. His first concern was not his self-promotion. His first concern was the Lord's reputation. Ibang-iba, no? Tayo, kadalasan, ang concern natin is our self-promotion. Who among us will be concerned of the Lord's reputation? Si Moses kasi hindi niya iniisip yung sarili niya. He was not thinking about himself. Kahit pa ulit-ulit sinasabi sa kanya ng Diyos, Moses, magtatayo na lang ako ng panibagong bayan, panibagong chosen nation out of your uh, saling lahi. Hindi na gumula dyan kina Abraham, Isaac, at si Jacob. Hindi na yung Israel na yan. Papalitan ko na yan. Magtatayo na ako ng ibang bayan sa'yo. Pero hindi po inintindi ni Moses yung self-promotion. Ang inintindi niya, the Lord's reputation. Sabi niya, Lord, pag ginawa mo yan, anong sasabihin ng ibang bansa na itong bayang ito pinili mo, nilabas mo sa Egypt para paslangin lang sa wilderness kasi hindi mo kayang ipasok sa promised land. Anong klaseng sasabihin meron ang Diyos, ang Israel? Kaya mga minamahal, yung self-promotion hindi inintindi ni Moses ang inintindi niya is the Lord's reputation. At sana sa umagang ito, tayo, ganyan ang magiging tibok ng ating puso. Huwag nating intindihin. When we are going through a lot of trials and temptations, when we are going through problems and difficulties sa ating buhay, huwag nating intindihin paano natin maisasalba ang ating sarili at ang, ang iisipin natin ay maipromote natin ang ating sarili. Ang isipin po natin, sa ating pinagdadaanan, paano natin iingatan ang pangalan ng Panginoong Diyos? Paano natin iingatan ang reputasyon, ang testimony na daladala natin bilang mga mana ng palataya? Moses was more disturbed about God's integrity amongst a pagan nation than excited about the possibility of than, than being excited about the possibility of becoming a great nation. Hindi niya iniisip yun eh. Woo, magiging isang great nation ang aking saling dahi. Hindi yun ang iniisip niya. Ang iniisip niya, ano ang sasabihin ng tao tungkol sa aming Diyos? I wonder, do we consider the Lord's reputation? Especially when we're tempted to promote our own self. People who know we are Christians rightly connect our actions to our relationship with God. Our actions are more far-reaching than we realize. Kaya po, ayusin po natin yung ating attitude. Ayusin po natin yung mga lumalabas sa ating bibig. Wag po tayong maghambog. Wag po tayong maging kamukha nitong children of Israel. Na, ito po yung nasulat, sabi po sa New Testament. Ano? Kaya binabalikan natin ang Old Testament. At huwag nating sabihin na hindi naman yung para sa inyo, bakit siya ng inyong inaaral. Eh kasi, ang sabi po sa New Testament, they were written for our admonition. 
they were written for our learning. At sana po maging lessons learned sa atin. Itong rebellion ng children of Israel, hindi nagdala ng blessing sa kanila, but rather evil results. So, ano ba ang naging uh, request ni Moses sa Diyos? Sabi niya, for the Lord to display His strength in terms of patience, love, forgiveness, and not in terms of destruction. Ito po ang isa sa mga bagay na napakabuti sa ating Diyos. Yung mas pinapakita niya, yung kanyang pasensya, yung kanyang pagmamahal, at yung kanyang pagpapatawad, kaysa yung pagpaparusa. Pero tandaan nyo, ang Panginoon natin ay ganyan. Pero lagi niyang sinasabi, will by no means clear the guilty. Kaya dito po sa Numbers chapter 14, verse 17, makikita niyo yung plead ni Moses sa Panginoon. Sabi niya in verse 19, tumalo na po tayo for the sake of time. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of these people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy, and as thou hast forgiven these people from Egypt even until now. Alam niyo ba binilang ng Diyos kung ilang beses silang nagrebelde doon sa wilderness? Ten times. And ten is God's number of completion. Binilangan niya eh. Hindi lang strike three, hindi lang strike four, hindi lang strike five. Strike ten. Ten times na itong children of Israel nagrebelde sa Diyos. Ayaw sumunod sa leadership that God appointed. Ayaw sumunod sa salita ng Diyos na napakalinaw na pinagagawa sa kanila. They wanted to do their own thing. They wanted to go back to Egypt instead of entering the promised land. Kung kayo ang Diyos, matutuwa kayo sa bayang ito? Sabi ng Diyos, nakakasampung beses na yung mga yan, Moses, papaslangin ko na lahat yan. Sabi ni Moses, huwag po, Panginoon, mahabag ka. Mayaman ka sa habag, mayaman ka sa pagpapatawad, mayaman ka sa pagmamahal, mayaman ka sa pasensya. At hiniling niya na itong bayang ito, minsan pa, patawarin ng Panginoon. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. So, kapag ka po na-experience natin ang lalim ng pagmamahal, ng pasensya, at ng pagpapatawad ng Diyos sa ating buhay, like Moses, who understood this very well, mas magiging mahalaga po sa atin ang karangalan ng Panginoon at maipakilala kung sino siya talaga bilang Diyos. His reputation will become our first concern. His integrity will be the reason of our loyalty. Kaya ito pong si Moses, he was walking humbly sa harapan ng Panginoon kasi kilalang kilala niya kung sino ang Diyos. At kung kilalang kilala natin kung sino ang Diyos sa ating buhay, hindi tayo magkakaroon ng lugar para tayo ay maghimagsik ang kalooban sa Diyos at para tayo ay magmalaki sa ating kapwa na para bang tayo ay espesyal sa iba at lalong hindi tayo magkakaroon ng spirit na ayaw na ayaw ng Diyos yung spirit of rebellion Now after Moses pleaded with God this is what God replied to Moses Sa Numbers chapter 14 verse 28 Hanggang dito po sa ah, pakahaba po nito, hanggang sa verse 35. Pero yung sasummarize ko na po sa inyo. Sabi ng Diyos kay Moses, o sige, hindi ko napapaslangin yung buong bayan, pero hindi sila makakapasok sa wilderness. Hanggat hindi namamatay ang bawat isa sa kanila, from 25 years upward, they will wander in the wilderness Tandaan po ninyo ha, 600,000 men ito. 
not including their wives and their children. So, sabi ng Panginoon, 25 years pataas, mamamatay sa wilderness. They will all die in the wilderness. They will not be able to enter the promised land. They will wander for 40 years. Kasi 40 days nilang inikot at iniscout yung promised land. Isang taon sa bawat isang araw. So 40 years they will wander in the wilderness. Until every one of them who rebelled against God will die in the wilderness. Ang makakapasok lang po ay si Joshua at si Caleb. Kasama ang bagong henerasyon, 24 years pababa. So, kung yung bata na 1 year old na nandoon nung sila'y ayaw pumasok sa promised land, umabot po itong batang ito na 1 year old na maging 40 years old bago siya nakapasok sa promised land. Kasi 40 years sila nag-ikot sa wilderness eh. So kung ako yung tatay ng 1 year old, kasama ako dun sa mamamatay sa wilderness, at yung anak kong 1 year old, yun yung makakapasok sa promised land. That's what happened here. That's what happened here. The children of Israel were so undeserving of God's love and favor. And the result of this rebellion was not pretty. All the adults, 25 years and above, would all wander and die in the wilderness. Nung sila po'y hindi pumasok sa wilderness, at sila'y, ah, sa, sa promised land, at sila'y bumalik sa wilderness, it was their death march. It was the longest funeral in the history of the world. Magpapaikot-ikot lang po sila sa wilderness to die there. Sayang, di ba? Eh kung pumasok na lang sila sa promised land, kung nagtiwala na lang sila at sumunod sila sa Diyos, at pumasok sila sa promised land, hindi sana naranasan nila ang buhay na matagumpay at pinagpala ng Diyos. Pero hindi eh. Mas pinairal nila yung sila ay magalit sa kanilang leader, mas pinairal nila yung sila ay maghimagsik ang kalooban sa Diyos, kasi akala nila sila ay hindi pangangalagaan ng Diyos. So what happened here is really an evil result of their rebellion. Their own, their all, they will all die in the wilderness. Their bones will all be scattered across the desert. God would destroy them all and leave their carcasses in the wilderness. Except for Caleb and Joshua and the next generation. So mga minamahal, mga minamahal, tingnan po ninyo hindi tayo pipiliti ng Diyos sumunod sa Kanya. Kung ayaw nating sumunod, sino ang mapapariwara? Tayo rin. Just like the children of Israel. Ayaw nila magtiwala at sumunod sa Diyos. So, sino na pariwara? Iba sila rin. Mabuti na lamang hindi pa nadamay ang kanilang mga anak. Mabuti na lang meron pang window of grace ang Panginoon na para sa kanilang mga anak if they will learn to trust and obey. Kaya that's the tragic price that they paid for their unbelief. At wag po tayong maging ganito mga klaseng tao. You see, it is all by the grace of God that the children of Israel were chosen as a nation. And it's only by the grace of God that each and every one of us were chosen to be in Christ. Huwag tayong maging mapagmalaki just because, ay, pinili ako ng Diyos, ay, ligtas ako, ay, pupunta ako sa langit. May pananampalataya ako sa Diyos. Tandaan po ninyo, it's all by the grace of God. At kapag sinabing grace, you do not deserve it, you are not entitled to it, you are now, you are no better than anybody else. And so, keep yourself humbled in the Lord. And always put yourself at the mercy of God. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. Wag ho tayong maging mga rebelde sa ating Panginoon. This is Pastor Jess Marasigan at sana po ay natuto po tayo sa mga salita ng Diyos. If we wanted the promises of God being fulfilled sa ating buhay, then let us exercise our trust and obedience sa Panginoon. Alright, tayo po ay mananalangin. Let us pray.